On this episode of the podcast, we have on Patrick Heinlein and Marco Ferrari, the talented duo behind Frontiersman and Antioch. Ferrari and Heinlein talk about the struggles of bringing Antioch to life, which is going straight to trade after two issues. The creative team shares how their commitment to themselves, fans, and retailers got them to the finish line, delivering what Patrick describes as Ferrari's best work. We also discuss their process and how this isn't the end of the Frontiersman universe. Listen in and bada boom. Hey, Patrick and Marco, how are you guys? Doing very well. Thank you for having us. Doing, doing fine. Thank you. Good, good. Uh, we're excited to, to have you on. You know, uh, as we record this, we're about a week out from the release of the trade of Antioch. And uh, I, for you guys, it's, it's kind of been a long time coming. So uh, what's it like to kind of be at, at this point with, with the book? And uh, what's the response been like? Well, uh, Marco, you tell me if it's dismissive if I go, Woo! <laughs> yeah, I know. You're, you're totally right. It's exactly uh, the best, the best way to, to to show how we feel after after this long journey <laughs> to have this book come out. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, uh, it's been a long time for a long time coming for us. Uh, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about it, but the, there was just a number of hurdles. So to be on the other side of a thing, <clears throat> even if it's something that you're very excited about and very proud of, th there's just this feeling of, oh, well, I don't have to think about it moving forward. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's part of the joy. Uh, we can talk about all the good features of this book, but one of the best features for us personally is that we completed it. <laughs> because uh, there, there, it was just uh, headache after headache for a minute there. Oh, is it like one of those things where you turn in a, pay, a term paper and it's like 15, you've been stressing it out and you're just like send. Uh, but I, I mean, I mean, it's great for, for me. Like I just got into your guys' work and, you know, I didn't follow the journey. So to me, it's like, oh, new book. Great. <laughs> that, that's yeah. cool. That's, I mean, that's, that's ideal. We, we, yeah. we don't want to put, uh, we don't want to put the headache on anybody else yeah. in, in, uh, in terms of the term paper uh, uh, metaphor, it's, it, it's, uh, it's kind of apt because yeah. It, to get it done felt so good that I didn't take appraisal of the actual work until it was time to proof it. Uh, mm -hmm. it uh, like I really wasn't putting it together. I, I was worried about one foot in front of the other. Let's get it done. And then Marco, you tell me if, if, if I'm, uh, if, if I'm uh, aggrandizing a little bit here, but I was really impressed. <laughs> like, I, I don't like to, <laughs> you know I mean? like, I, I'm not the guy that uh, I'm not a good salesman of, of my own work, but, I am a decent salesman of Marco's work, and I would say the last twenty pages are is spectacular growth for Marco. Like who started the book as a great artist and, and then uh, ends on such a high note. I was uh, I'm just very impressed with the book in general. Uh, when you know, w w like I said, when it's when it's one foot in front of the other, you don't really get to take any inventory of it. But I, I was really happy with how it turned out. Um, you've been you're always too kind with me because uh, <laughs> I appreciate uh, uh, the the all the problems that book had uh, always kept me on 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 the on the spine and I was feeling like I wasn't doing enough for 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 the book and uh, it was failing because of me and. And that it was actually my my part that was uh, missing something. So, uh, as you guys said, uh, probably I, I I didn't even uh, work step by step and page by page. But um, seeing it done, it's it's been a really a really a brief of fresh air for me because I, I was swamped in in all my misery about uh, how much i should redo all the pages because that's actually what happened like i reworked the color of the whole book because i, I was feeling uh, it wasn't good enough the first time i worked on it so uh, it's like not even a 2.0 version of the single issues we have done 
uh, it's a new book and um, Patrick have seen it like completed uh, when he did the the proofing but uh, I I haven't looked at the final result until the other day that a friend had a copy at her home our friend Pepper that she's an artist that um, collaborated with us in the book uh, did a, a back matter story for us and she received her copies I haven't had yet mine but uh, she she sent me uh, some some pics and stuff like that. And that's actually when I've seen the completed book for the first time. So uh, I, I totally tried to keep the book away from me, from me <laughs> as much as possible to to recover from from everything uh, from, from, from the work on, on the book. But at the end, I, I'm it would sound like very pity to, to say all this stuff and expect to people say, no, look, it's very good. Uh, I'm very happy of the book and I think we have done something. I, I, will, I wouldn't say remarkable, but something I'm not used to see uh, after a book uh, fail and with all the problems that the industry have, uh, we choose to to complete it and probably uh, put too much too much time more than it would actually need it. But yeah, I'm very very happy of the book. So um, yeah, I I I don't want to hijack I don't want to hijack your podcast, fellas. But uh, it, just to expand, well, on... we you're our guest, so people yeah, want to hear you, you keep guys. Talking, so keep talking. Keep talking. Talk, <laughs> please. Uh, well, well, just to expand on what Marco was saying, uh, th th there's an interesting phenomenon in comics, which is just the the, the raw practicality of things uh, dictating. I mean, just in any form of commercial art, right? It, it, it's uh, yeah, you have to make hard decisions, and uh, Marco and I uh, really it, look because let's address the elephant in the room. It's much easier for writers than it is for artists uh, in in terms of man hours put in, and uh, I think most people in comics at this point would would agree in terms of of talent. So uh, Marco uh, made a very rare decision uh, in comics to finish out a work that. I think many people, many teams would have abandoned because uh, we we won't see money on this for for like a year and a half. <laughs> you know I mean? so, so, so it, it's uh, uh, it, it, it that's a really hard decision to make when you are a working artist. Marco is not a hobbyist; this is his career, so he he has to. He, he basically you, you're pulling double shifts between the work that is paying you now and the work that's going to pay you in a year and a half, because uh, for people that don't know the history of the book, w we ran into every conceivable problem in the production of the book and it would not have made uh, respectfully to our, our peers and contemporaries. Uh, we've seen people abandon books for, for much less trouble <laughs> than we experienced. So, uh, I was, uh, you know, Marco and I have, uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps Catholic guilt or something. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 uh, it, 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 once, once we've committed to the thing, it has to be done or we feel, um, we, we just feel like there's something hanging over our heads. So, uh, it, it felt really, felt really good, um, to be, to be a part of a team that, actually delivers on on what they said they would so uh yeah but just without hammering it too much because i want people to buy this book because mm. it's a great book yeah. but uh if you want to see the the uh the, the human struggle against time and 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 money <laughs> <laughs> you you could also pick up the book and, and see if it's a, if it's a success on on that level because uh yeah it's uh 
uh, a lot of people probably would have gone the other way with this. Yeah. No, I well, need hey, to... oh, go ahead, Troy. Sorry. I mean, if we were to go back to like that term paper analogy, like I definitely think this is like an A plus between <laughs> between both of you because after reading it, I was like, all right, I definitely need to read Frontiersman, and that was also a big A plus in, in my book, and it's. Uh, it's crazy to think like, you know, you guys are in such, Chris and I are in different time zones, but you guys are like several, several different time zones <laughs> away. So like, how do you guys like collaborate and like stay in sync with like, like the story is great. The artwork is extremely beautiful and like such high quality. So how do you guys stay in sync when you're bringing both high quality ingredients together to make these stories? Uh, well, Marco and I have more collaboration than uh, m most, uh, creators that I, uh, create with, uh, and that's no small part of the fact that we, I enjoy everybody I work with a great deal, mm. but, 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 uh, Marco is, uh, Marco is very easy to talk to. And, uh, there's, there's a real rapport. There's, there's some creators that you work with who are brilliant minds. Uh, you're, you're incredibly happy to have them as a partner. Uh, but there's not the simpatico s s sort of, uh, 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 you know, you, you don't immediately get along. Uh, but with uh, Marco and I will just bullshit. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> we'll, we'll just get on the we'll just get on Skype and, and, and just uh, uh, t talk about books that we like or whatever, which is uh, a, a nice uh, a nice partnership to be in. Yeah. Uh What's really cool about um, reading Frontiersman and then reading Antioch is just seeing the growth as you guys as collaborators. For me, I read them kind of back to back. Mm -hmm. And speaking to like what you were speaking about to, to Marco, like Marco, it was amazing to kind of see like what you're able to do and sort of you could see the commitment. I know it probably was stressful in the time to kind of build that and sort of draw those things out. I'm sure there were, you know, 16 hour days and, you know, all that. But for me as a reader, I really saw that sort of come through and um, really see you guys sort of get to, it is really good to see like a, a writer artist team sort of have a second go at something and um, to see what you're able to do, especially with those, uh, those pages, especially with the, the, the prison break and all that. I, I just wanted to shout you out and sort of say that it, it definitely shows the work you put in. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. I'm very glad that shows how um, it's a very cliche type of phrase but we really worked hard on this book because we love uh the work we we have done uh and to 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 complete what patrick said about how how we 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 work together and how we we, we can manage to make it works it's probably because there is the fact that when when we go into uh, something Patrick writes, it's not just a text that arrives to me and I have to reproduce, but it's a, a share of a vision. And there is a back and forth from us. And things takes life every time we, we discuss about it. Uh, uh, it's very natural how uh, something that is that comes out from a sketch of mine in a background becomes a major character two pages later uh, because he he had noticed it or um, I can I can find uh, a nice way of of conveying what he is writing with with my panels so. Um, uh, I, I started my, I have, to, my debut in American comics hasn't been with Patrick, but, uh, Patrick's actually the, the person with, uh, with who I worked the most uh, and I've grew up a lot and we grew up together. So, uh, if reading back to back Frontiersman and Antioch, uh, has shown something is absolutely how how we became not just colleagues and a writer and artist but 
uh, friends and we i think we we could say that makes things more easier for me like it's my uh uh life jacket in, in <laughs> even if not even on on project where i don't work with him uh i can go to him and uh find a a safe place a, a, a place a person where cuz yeah that that's probably what 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 I would say about why it's so easy for me. Thank you, Marco. That's more, that's more <laughs> than I deserve. Uh, it, it, it's uh, uh, yeah. I I I do a lot of comic work, uh, and a lot of it. It's important to trust every collaborator. It's important to, uh, it, it, you know, as a writer, we, we could say that. In 2023, the writer is the one that that whose name sells the book, but it, it's kind of a it's a very it's a very funny uh, and unfair balance because the writer's name sells the book, but it's kind of understood that if the art is not great, that th that book won't be remembered, right? So so right now you have a lot of you, you have a lot of books out there that are getting by on the fact that the writer has built a name for themselves. And in some ways, for lack of a better word, and I don't mean this with any, with any judgment, it's almost exploiting the artist because th the artist's name does not grow in the same way that the writer's name does. But uh, very early on in my relationship with Marco, uh, I not just because I care for Marco very much, but also because I, I think his work is that great, I really wanted any book we would do together to, to sell his art, <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I mean? To, to, to make it so, 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 uh, if, uh, if I'm in the same place in my career, uh, in a year from now, I want Marco to be three steps pe past that. And, uh, you know, I, I want that for every artist I work for to have a beautiful career, of course. Uh, but, but I, I think that there is, uh, uh, I, I'm just a big believer in Marco's work, uh, you know what I mean? And have been for a long time. So, so uh, I try very hard uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to uh, give him scripts where he can not just have pages to sell, but pages that sell, that sell him, you, you know what I mean? That, that, that make sure that, uh, that, that announce him, that, that make sure that he's uh, uh, getting the recognition that he deserves. So uh, I, and I think in Antioch, more than Frontiersman, it will depend. Well, let me say it like this. Frontiersman, I think, uh, s sold a lot of uh, the subtleties of Marco's work. Uh, uh, particularly, you know, it's it, this is not a thing that people, uh, art collectors look for. It is not a thing that readers of comics uh, really zeroed in on and understand. But drawing foliage for a uh, hundred pages is really hard. <laughs> and, and this man drew this man drew more trees than anybody in the last twenty years, and uh, and that's really exceptional. And other artists notice. Other artists immediately noticed uh, Frontiersman and Marco's work. Uh, but uh, on Antioch, I wanted to to demonstrate that Marco can do uh, bombast and 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 do uh, uh, large uh, set pieces and, and uh, big action, uh, and he, I I think we accomplished that. Yeah, I mean, like what's really great about it is it's is exactly as you described. It's it's definitely like a different pace. I think people of Frontiersman will, will definitely like the book, but it's something different for you guys, and you see sort of that. Uh, elevation you know especially even the design of Antio. you know he's kind of got this badass almost like video game character look you know he's got the leather pants he's shirtless he's ripped <laughs> you know what i mean he just looks like straight out of a video game which is great i think that's something um you know especially with comics they should be fun you know these characters should look great and i think you guys did a good job in, in frontiersman especially with those um uh, those uh those bios of the characters and stuff and especially with this one it's, it's more natural the world feels more lived in so i definitely think you guys hit hit it with that thank uh, you uh thank you so much oh, please <laughs> i know it, it's uh 
because when when Patrick came to me after uh, the prior book to Frontiers Man, he told me, "Look, Marco, what do you want to draw? <laughs> what 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 was what's your into?" And I said, "I want to draw characters that at some point we we would can we would have toys." Who can make toys out of them? So, frontiersman characters are all uh, looking. I was working to to have them looking as much as possible as action figures, and that's why uh, the main villain is very uh, toy she. And uh, uh, while in Antioch. We 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 focus. You're right, say, video games, but also uh, we were inspired by '90s OVA uh, from the Japanese animation and all that kind of stuff that I'm really into. So uh, I'm very happy that uh, these things uh, can transpire from from the book because shows that at least we 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 hit the, the the point uh, on that part. Yeah, um, and then I, I wanted to ask you guys, I, I know like you touched on sort of the, the struggles you, you ran into and stuff, but like, do you guys see it as, as a good opportunity? I think sometimes like we get stuck on the idea of the floppy, um, especially sort of with, with the direct market and stuff. But I think like, for example, like, you know, when I, I heard about the book and obviously I was telling Marco before we hopped on, I had found his his art through like Twitter and IG. So I was like, oh, wow, he does sequentially, he does comic books. Let me look into this. It was easy to get Frontiersman. I literally ordered it. It was <laughs> at my door. You know, I read the whole thing. Whereas, you know, maybe if, you know, Antioch was just floppies, I would have had to go to my comic store. It's like, hey, like, do you have the back issues? And then be like, all right, like they're back there. Do you see it as an opportunity to kind of like experiment a little? Like, do you guys think you'll go straight to trade with some of your projects in the future? Well, it, it, it's really tough because yeah. uh, it, <clears throat> I, I recently did it uh, with my co-creator, Paul, uh, on a uh, OGN called Stringer. And it is a hardcover, it's tactile, it's, it's really a nice presentation. Mm. And I, I love, I, I really love the book, but uh, the, the, the man hours that you have to put in to that many pages, it, it sort of requires two points or, or two, uh, formats of sale. So, um, you would need to set, you would need to your break even costs to go through, uh, to be absorbed by the, uh, single sales of single issues. And then, uh, in a perfect world, in a perfect world, those made money. In a not perfect world, uh, they absorb the costs of production, uh, uh, art production primarily. And, and then uh, the trade in that case would be the place that you presumably actually make real money. When you cut out the floppies, uh, you, you cut out the, all the opportunity to make back uh, your production budget. So it's you have to be operating on that Brubaker and Phillips uh, level of sales. Like th yeah. those gentlemen do great. And, and what they're doing is great. Uh, but that's also because uh, I don't, this is with all the respect in the world to them. I, I really love a lot of their books, but uh, if, if they, as great as they are, if they uh, were, re if they were debuting them in the market right now as new creators, even at the high level that they're operating on creatively, uh, it would be really difficult for them to, to find the sort of penetration that they are now. But this is, I mean, this is what careers are. I think what they're doing is beautiful because that's 25 years. So at 25 years, they, I don't want to get into their money. It's, it, and it's all back of the envelope yeah. math anyway, it's not fair to them, but they make a great living doing really high end work now that is, that it caters to book market caters to uh, kind of a, a very broad and accessible uh, uh, format. And I think that that's brilliant, but it, it is, uh, that's, that's like a 20 year, 20 year March, you, you know what yeah. I mean? To, to arrive there. Um, 
but I, I mean, God willing, Marco and I will arrive there because it is, it is a wonderful format. I'll say one, I'll say this as committed as I am to floppies, an OGN does have a certain heft to it that, that just, it feels like a complete work from jump, you know what I mean? Which, which is different than uh, uh, periodical comics, the way that they are supposed to be a lengthy narrative I, I, right now the market is sorry i'm gonna i'm gonna make this the bully pulpit for a second no right, no please. right now the, well, I, that's the kind of answer i was looking for by the way yeah exactly <laughs> so, so, so right now the mark yeah. we have a schizophrenic market at the moment because it uh we the comics are meant to be long form that's that's the power of the periodical format it, it's to go 50 issues it's to go 100 issues it's to go a thousand issues uh and right now the market is such that it's very difficult for most series to get to 10. So you're not getting this, you're not getting the, the aesthetic benefit of floppy comics anymore uh, at all. And that they, and they probably should be uh, go, or they probably should be graphic novels. Uh, however, the market is broken in a very specific way that does not allow them to be the thing that they really should be. You know what I mean? Because there's no purpose in the world for something for for four issues of periodical comics. Th those should be a, a beautiful trade, unless there's unless there's a storytelling reason, a in which case, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. It's it, it, it's that's a choice. But I, I really feel that once we took long form off the table, you know, you could argue that the big two have taken long form off the table. As a, as a choice, but for most indie creators, uh, long form is just not financially viable, right? One, once that went away, I it would have been great if we could have found a way as an industry to pivot uh, towards more OGNs, but it just has, we haven't figured out how to make money out, off of that yet. Nobody really has, you know what I mean? So, um, I, I, I hope that that changes because we do need more format options uh, for creator owned creators and, and indie creators right now. Yeah, I appreciate that insight. I think the reason I asked it is like doing this podcast, you talk to so many people and I think sort of the same things come up and you're kind of trying yeah. to figure out like, hey, like, is there an answer to this? <laughs> and, you know, it, it, it's it's complicated. There's a lot of good ideas out there. But, you know, I think it's one of those things where, like I said, uh, for me, it was great to be able to pick up Frontiersman really quickly and enjoy, enjoy the art. Like next week, I'll be picking up Antioch. But like for me, like it has been like one of those complicated things. Even me as a as a collector, like my shop closed down not too long ago. And I find myself going to like, hardcovers and omnibus because i'm like i live in new york i don't have the space also yeah. every time i fall in love with a series it's six issues so it's like <laughs> so it's like i might as well wait for the trade so um i appreciate the the insight and like i said it's it's one of those things where i it just it comes up with every creator so i think it's top of mind for everyone and i, I do hope we do get to a spot where you know we can um they could find a way to sort of make that money because I think people are really invested in sequential art. You see how popular manga is. So like people like that type of storytelling wherever it is. So um, I just want yeah, to see I, comics do well. <laughs> I, I know that Marco may feel, Marco may feel differently than me because uh, to him, this is, he grew up with this format probably as the boring format, but uh, like many American creators, I, I really wish that we could pivot towards a, a, uh, 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 European album uh, style uh, mm -hmm. because if we could sell 60 pages of oversized uh, comic for $20 uh, that and people could expect th that to come out uh, uh, maybe not quarterly but twice a year or whatever th there is the potential there for uh, for independent creators to to make their way with, with that format, but shops and readers are so resistant to it. Mm. it. Even though, even though, like you you say, I live in New York, I don't have a ton of space. Well, all those hardcovers would, of course, occupy space over time. Uh, however, they would look beautiful on your shelf, particularly if if they were. Uh, 
you know, the spine design w- was uh, unified and <clears throat> there's, there's such potential for the 60 to 80 page uh, uh, European album format, really 60. If we could dial in a hardcover 60 with the expectation that people were willing to pay $20 for it, uh, we may be able to arrive someplace where creators who sell, you know, 10,000 of something could, could really make it make sense. You, you, you know what I mean? And, yeah. uh, but uh, readers just are not interested <laughs> in the United States. And, and God forbid that you, you go to a publisher with European album format, they go, Oh, stop, man. <laughs> because, because every American, I'm not exaggerating. Every mm-hmm. American creator worth, worth their salt has gone to the publisher and with the same spiel, which is, I have a great self-contained thing. I, it is the, the art's going to be beautiful. It is perfectly locked in the, it, it, it's, it's everything it needs to be. And they go, that's fantastic. But retailers hate them because they don't stock well and uh, c- collectors do not buy them. A- and then you're left with book market as your only point of sale. And they don't know what to do with an oversized book in the United States. So you are selling to nobody twice. You were selling to nobody three times. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, and so publishers, you know, like, I've got to say that that uh, uh, image has been very good to Marco and I, uh, and potentially they, you know, they would suffer through us coming to them and saying we'd like to do a Euro album format and everything. But I don't. My impression is that they would not be terribly excited <laughs> for, yeah. for, for, for for that, you know. So uh, it's it's a very uh, it's a very tricky market uh, and everybody's solutions are going, uh, unfortunately, really, because I would love for there to be a one, one size fits all solution for everybody. But it seems that for at least the next few years, and by that, I mean, potentially decade, uh, creators are going to have to have to figure out who, who their, their reader is very specifically and tailor their, their format, tailor their, their, their uh, style of sale to that person. And while that is very possible, we've seen that on Kickstarter. Uh, it, it is, uh, it doesn't lead to growth. It, it, it leads to servicing the person who already cares for your work and perhaps they could be, uh, advocates for your work in some way, but really you kind of, um, you build a wall around yeah, your customer base and you, you try to, you try to service that person very well, but nobody else is making it in that wall. That, that's what happens with a lot of these different styles of um, whenever you, whenever you dial it in perfectly to your readership and you do everything to service that person. A lot of times that means that it just stays that person. So, so th- it's a, it's a very difficult moment that we're in market wise. Sorry to bring sorry to bring down the tenor of the no, no, of no. the show. Oh no, <laughs> yeah. we're 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 gonna bring it back up. Um, because like whatever it takes, if it means a European album like style, like well, look, we're gonna buy it because uh oh, Frontier, I mean Frontiersman and Antioch were both great. Uh and like Chris said, like he read them pretty much back to back. I read them back to back, and it was like this is an amazing universe both of you have created from the art to the story. And one thing that I kept thinking about was like how unique it is that I'm viewing this universe through an older hero's perspective. And I was curious, what was that like to write it from that perspective? Even though it's an older character, it still feels very fresh and still somehow like familiar, like everything belongs in like a perfect place. Uh, there's nothing I would would ever want to change from it, but how was it writing something from an older character? Because I feel like most people want to watch like a younger hero grow up and struggle and adapt like a Peter Parker, but this is like an old Bruce Wayne. We're kind of like seeing everything through. How was it kind of writing stuff and drawing things with that perspective in mind? Well, 
so so that's a good question and and i marco and i have had every bit of feedback that you could possibly imagine <laughs> regarding our choice of of lead there because i was getting emails about how uh, you know people assigned politics to the fact that that he's just an old guy and uh marco and i have our personally held politics but there there was no intention to politicize the the aging superhero <laughs> as an idea uh however we we got a lot of that uh because apparently i i wouldn't have thought it but apparently it is a little a little uh different although you know you 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 of course dark knight returns and you know like there are precedent of course for for the aged hero but uh it's uh, I guess it's not as common as I would have thought because people, or maybe there's just wing nuts in in every readership. Uh, but but we certainly got emails about uh, the choice to make him a, an older fella. But the, I thought that the idea, you know, the thrust, the theme of the of of the story, uh, that you don't know if you're, you you don't know if you still have it, and you don't know if you still want it. And you're getting older, and this could apply to a 60-year-old man, or it could apply to a 30-year-old woman. It could apply to it, it, it's just the idea that uh, you were once on the pulse of a thing, you were once important to people in a specific way, and now you're not, and you're not, and you don't know if that's for the best or 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 if you want to be involved in it, and how much of that is ego. Right? How much of it is is uh, is well intentioned versus how much of it is is self satisfying? It it's, I I think that that's something that every person goes through, if they had very, uh, for example, <clears throat> I'm staying. Uh, everybody before this podcast started, I I put on my my fly screen mask because I'm I'm staying in Western <laughs> Australia in, a, in the bush, and at a resort. Don't get the wrong impression. I'm not <laughs> camping, uh, but but but. Uh, the the uh, the gentleman at the at the front desk, uh, he's Argentinian, and uh, I asked him, "Hey, you can't offend me. D d don't worry about your answer. I I have no dog in the fight. How do you feel about your new president? Right? Because Argentina just got a new president, and he's a very controversial figure. And I was curious to hear from an Argentinian, and he smiled and he said, "You know." And he's not an old man. He's maybe 40. He said, you know, as a young man, I cared a, a great deal about politics. And then I realized that they'll happen with or without me. And I have a life to live. And that's an interesting perspective because maybe he feels, he didn't say this to me, but maybe he feels some guilt. Maybe he feels like he, sh he should still care, but he just can't. He's burnt out, right? And, and but these are things that everybody goes through. It doesn't have to be politics. It could be uh, like a, a community that you were once a big part of, you know, like people are part of these online communities. They, they, they form friendships, form bonds, and then they move on from them in whatever capacity. And maybe they feel, oh, well, should I still be there? Do I have an obligation? <laughs> you know what mm. I mean? Am, am I supposed to be moderating the, you know, the, the Sailor Moon Discord or something, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever it is? Um, it, it, it's a, uh, uh, it's just this idea that to to have once been and to be no longer and and what goes into that mentally and emotionally, I thought was very relatable. But then but then we had you know of course some people saying this guy's old and Donald Trump is old, so that means uh, you like Donald Trump and <laughs> and, Mar and Marco and I are, are grabbing our heads. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Missed the point, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, Missed the, <laughs> miss the point. Oh, that's great. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you guys. We, we really appreciate sort of your openness, and uh, we're really excited. I, I think for me, like, um, it's always great to to find something new, especially these days when you know all the shelves are kind of filled with the same thing, which I love. As you see behind me, you know, I have all the things. Um, but it is great to to find something new and sort of you know to see Markle's art and then be like, oh wow, like this is Frontiersman. Oh, there's another book. It is great, and I really appreciate you guys coming on. But uh, where can people find you? Where can uh, uh, they find your work? Uh, and what are you working on next? 
Uh, well, Marco, I'm going to take a second and, and, and plug Maurizio as well. Mm. Um, so, uh, th this sort of frontiersman world that Marco and I have been building on, uh, this, an absolutely brilliant, uh, uh, colleague of Marco's and now friend of mine as well, uh, Maurizio, uh, it, it, Marco, could you pronounce Maurizio's last name correctly, please? Uh, yes. Maurizio Rosenzweig. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, 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 so that is a, uh, that is a Jewish man who of Italian descent. Uh, I, I had never met somebody with that uh, naming convention in, in my life, but uh, n now uh, consider him a friend. Uh, <laughs> he, he, so um, Maurizio is uh, maybe Italy's uh, best kept secret in some ways. Uh, he, he's been doing great work for a long time, but really for, for that market and doesn't have a ton of American work behind him. Uh, but we're trying in, in uh, 2024 to change that. And uh, he and I did a, a, uh, a serialized uh, story for the image anthology, the image uh, 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 anniversary thing that they were doing. And that's going to be collected. It's called Gehenna. It is in that frontiersman world, but it is much uh, street. It's much more street level. It, it, it's uh, a, an easy analog would be the Punisher, uh, and, and it is uh, violent and 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 revels in its violence and is fun in that way. And uh, with Maurizio, we have another project planned, also in the Frontiersman universe, uh, coming next year. We'll talk about that soon. And then uh, Marco and I, uh, well, we have something quite big coming late next year, uh, also in, in the same universe. And uh, th that'll be, I think that that will be, you know, taking myself, taking myself out of the equation for just a moment. I think it, I, I, I think Marco will be, if he isn't already, will be very undeniable <laughs> at that point, because it is, it is everything that you would want to see this man draw. And it is, uh, uh, I, I think it'll be uh, a, a great, a great series. And I, I wish we could talk about it a little bit more, but uh, uh, we haven't announced it yet, but uh, th th that's coming soon. And uh, you can just, for people, anybody looking for me, you can find me at, at uh, my name. It's just Patrick Kindlin. Uh, I don't check things very often, so good luck, but you know. <laughs> yeah, for me, uh, it, it, it's easy to find me is, uh, Marco Ferrari, um, Inc., uh, my handle, uh, all together in every social you, you could find me. So I'm on, uh, formerly known as Twitter X and, uh, on Instagram, uh, I, I joined Fred's the other day, so I'm there too. Uh, so, but yeah, um. I'm more more uh, um, active on on Instagram just for the easy uh, of using it. But uh, yeah, we, we we decided to have the Frontiersman universe being our playground and put there all the characters we want and have fun with them. So uh, we 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 planned a lot of of stories in that universe and. I can't wait to to start working on it on the new one because um uh, has a lot of input by me this time. Uh, so um uh, I'm very, very excited to start working on it. Um but yeah, I'm working on, on a book for humanoids this year because uh, I've being approached by them for uh, their anniversary, that is in 2024, for uh, a graphic novel uh, to come out for their anniversary. So uh, you, you'll probably find me on that uh, next year. And I, I'm, I'm having my uh, finger crossed for <laughs> two projects. I'm waiting 
yes, sir, I, I still can speak about, but uh, I'll see what happens. And of course, um, I'm always with Patrick on every project on the universe, uh, Frontiersman universe, of course. So uh, I'm behind Gehenna uh, too, with like as a creative director and on all the other projects we worked on. Um, in fact, yeah, I don't know if you, Patrick, want to talk about it, but uh, about Mocha. Sure. So, so, so briefly, fellas, I, I know you, you probably want to wrap, but uh, Marco and I, uh, well, as you pointed out, we, we just get on very well. So, mm -hmm. so uh, we thought, how could we expand outward this thing that we do and uh, kind of, kind of uh, run the business the way that we would like to see it run. So uh, to that end, uh, we essentially have a studio. Uh, we are the creative directors. Uh, <clears throat> we work in collaboration with both each other and uh, other creators and, you know, try to pay everybody fairly, make every, make everything the way that we would want it to be within our ability to do so. And uh, we're trying to deliver some really good, very different books to market over the next few years and, you know, see where it goes from there. But it, it's, it's basically, uh, it, it's basically how we don't want, we don't want to be publishers. We, 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 we only fell into the editor role because uh, we wanted to see it done a specific way, but it, it's really uh, how would we do this differently? And uh, I think we're accomplishing that. We have a number of projects coming out, uh, some of, some of which will be uh, crowdfunded some, and then uh, off to publishers, some of which will be, publisher first, and then perhaps deluxe is done uh, through crowdfunding. Uh, basically, as, as, as you pointed out earlier, uh, th there needs to be some type of shakeup in format and, and uh, what, are, what is the potential there? Uh, we're trying to explore that on two levels, uh, the, the creative level of, of who we work with, and then also uh, how, it, how we bring it to market. That was, sorry for that investor's pitch, but but basically, but, but, basi but basically, I'm sure hedge funds are listening to this. So you know, please, please. <laughs> but 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 basically, it's. Uh, I feel blessed in, in having Marco as uh, as not just my co-creator but my partner in this because uh, it we can work off of each other's strengths and and try to do things in a in a way that w we would have because we've had good experiences. I mean, honestly, we had a book at Aftershock and we knew that people had their complaints there, but we didn't experience that directly. And then at, at Image, we, we've had, I don't want to say carte blanche because uh, it makes, it, 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 it's overselling what we're able to do. Of course, we have to go through people, but we've been given a lot of latitude and we've just been able to explore our careers the last few years in ways that we want to do it. And that has given us kind of the, the, the wind behind our backs, the, the battery in our back to, to say, okay, and, and what would the logical limit of that be? Wh wh where would we like to take that? So uh, we've got a number of projects that we'll be announcing shortly. Hopefully it's the Brubaker Phillips thing. That's where it'll take you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, from, from your lips to, from your lips to God's ears, I, I, I would, uh, I, I I mean, could you imagine how good, just like a ninety-page uh, hardcover from Marco that with that that was built in that format, like was built with that with that intention, uh, so the storytelling could have you know periodical comics. The beauty of them is that is that punctuation at the end of each book. If you're doing it right, there, there there's the exclamation point. Sometimes a question mark. Often, an ex <laughs> often an exclamation point. And that's part of the rhythm of the whole thing. But imagine, and that's also the rhythm to Antioch. You can, you, even though it was released as a, as a trade minus the whatever, it, it, even though it was released as a trade, uh, it, it was written as those 
as the uh, punctuated in that way. Uh, but imagine Marco got carte blanche to do a slow build to 120. You know what I mean? A slow build to, to, to even just 60 uninterrupted. The, the, the Brubaker Phillips model would be, would be beautiful to play with someday. So, you know, from your lips to God's ears, we'll get there. <laughs> and I'm going to have to start using that saying a lot more from your lips to God's ears. And one of the things is going to be about how we want more frontiersmen because we're both invested in the frontiersmen universe. Uh, it sounds like there's tons of projects coming out in 2024 and we're going to be following you to hear about everything that's going to be coming out because I can't tell people enough how much I love these two uh, these two characters, these two stories, and I can't wait to see where everything goes. Uh, but thank you guys so much for your time. We appreciate you coming on, you know, talking to us about the industry, about the characters and the art that you've created. I, it's definitely a story that we both love. I, I can't stop saying that because of how good it is. Um, there's going to be five people close to me here in Vegas that are going to have to read this. Uh, but uh, we look forward to what comes out in 2024. And with that, bada boom. Bada boom. Bada boom. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Bob Boom Podcast. Keep the conversation going with Chris and I on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. You can find us on all these places at, at Bada Boom Podcast. Get into the comments on our YouTube channel. Let us know what you like about the show or what you'd like to hear from us in the future. Until next time, please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Thanks for listening. <laughs>